We are rounding the corner on the end of April and goodness gracious, oh me, oh my, it means summer is coming. Well, hey, and welcome back to The Commonplace. My name is Autumn Kern, and while it did feel like summer last week, we think, I think we hit 80s a couple times, it is back to being rather chilly, and so I feel like it is a joke on me to not get too far ahead of myself in life and to live very presently where we are, but summer is coming. And today I thought we would talk about some principles and ideas for how a homeschool mom can spend their summer in a really purposeful, intentional way. Summer is a unique time of year for the homeschool mom, even though you probably don't fully stop all of your home educating. And of course, we are always teaching our children things. It is this time where we can reset, we can reflect, we can change things, plan for the coming year. And I think it's really important that moms do that well during this time. And so I've created a couple of categories that I'm using this summer to really prepare going into the next formal school year, kind of resetting my house, different things like that. And I thought I'd share it today so that you can do it too. I'm also going to be sharing over in Common House my exact plans that I'm doing in each of these categories in another video. And so if that's of interest to you, you can join us and you will be in good company with about 400 international moms who are learning to make truth, goodness, and beauty something their whole families can experience through all five senses. So the very first one is habits and habits gets a lot of attention in the Charlotte Mason world because of course, the instrument of discipline is one of our three tools that we have to rightly motivate children and discipline means habits. But in case you did not know, even Charlotte Mason herself said, do not make a fetish out of habits. So before I even tell you to think about the habits, I wanna make sure that you don't slip into some weird sort of behaviorism where you're ringing bells and your children are salivating and all that. Instead, I want you to think about what sort of practices can I build in my home for my children that set their feet on the path of the good life so that what God calls good is their norm. That's how we're gonna think about habits. Now, I usually talk about them in these two categories. There are mom habits, things you want in your home, and there are God habits, like moral habits that need to be done, and they do not exist on the same level. So let's start with the mom habits. These would be things like, I want you to put your nasty beach towel after you've been swimming in the creek into the laundry hamper and not leave it on the floor next to the back door. Or, hey, at my house, I would like for you to close the back door when you come inside. That's a mom habit. A moral habit is you must tell the truth all of the time. And when you train these two habits, you're gonna train them in different ways and with different degrees of intensity. But summer is the perfect time to train a habit. You've probably gone from doing two to four hours of schooling now to no schooling. And so you have a lot more bandwidth, a lot more time to really partner with your children and Training habits is partnering with your child, helping them, not just telling them what to do. And you have that time to do that. You have the space to do that. You have honestly just the bandwidth to do that during the summer that you do not have during the school year. And so when you think about those mom habits, I encourage you to think about what needs to happen for our next school year to run smoothly? Like that's a valid question to be asking. What sort of chore habits need to be trained? Hot tip, I train my children on a set of chores that they keep for the whole year. We don't do like a rotating week chart or anything. I know people love that, but this way a kid gets really good at their habits and then the next year I can add another habit on. And so think through what is my child now capable of doing that they weren't before because your family is a whole family. Everyone needs meaningful work. Everyone contributes and children get a lot of satisfaction out of having real jobs in the house they know really contribute to the running of the home. So that's one great thing to think through. Another would be, okay, what did not go well in the school year this year? Were the little ones always getting into that cupboard? So ask yourself, should I move everything out of that cupboard this summer? Or should I think about training them not to go in the cupboard? Or should I think about moving where we homeschool so the cupboard isn't an issue? You can really troubleshoot a lot of problems like that so that you're not going into the school year and fumbling over the same things that maybe were troubles in term three this year. And then for the moral habits, take a look back through your mother's diary that hopefully you were somewhat keeping this year and think about what needs to be adjusted with each of your children. What do you need to focus on? What do you need to partner with? What inspiring ideas do you need to give? And then treat it like the measles, which in the early 1900s meant that all of life stopped while you took care of the kid with the measles. And that's how we treat a moral habit issue. So cut out a couple weeks. Say, I'm gonna be working on this with this one kid, or hey, I'm gonna put them all together and we're gonna do a team habit. I talk about this in my Way of the Will Guide, which is also in Common House, about different ways that you can prepare yourself to habit train, as well as habit train a whole group of small kids at one time. And 
I would love for you to check it out. And then lastly, in that habits category, think about what habits do I need to train in myself this summer? Because guess what? You are always learning better habits. This is actually something I was just talking about in a recent lesson for our Habits 101 course, also in Common House. And I was talking about the things that mom really needs to prepare for before she begins habit training her children. Tact watchfulness, persistence, how I do that, what practically it looks like to prepare to habit train. But when you're habit training yourself, you really need to consider what kind of things am I adding to our atmosphere? What practices do I have? Are they drawing me towards the kingdom of God? Are they making me a virtuous person? Or are they not? And then what living ideas am I bringing in? Both from, yeah, the books maybe I read, but also the things I do on my phone and all sorts of people I hang out with and really adjust yourself. Maybe you fell into a bad habit sometimes during the black hole that was term two of just yelling up to the kids who were, who were being a little mischievous during lessons and then never following through. So they've learned the habit of ignoring you until you come up the stairs. All of those things can be addressed during the summer and it can be a real gift to the entire family, not only when you go into the school year, but also just this summer. You can have a lot of fun when your children are able to obey, tell the truth and pay attention. Now the next thing is one of my favorite things to talk about, leisure because yes summer is also a time for some much needed rest now last summer i actually did an entire series in common house called the summer of lady leisure what are the practices the ideas for mind body and spirit that really nourish us so i really challenge the american modern notion of relaxation or zoning out or getting a break me time different things like that and actually asked what does it look like for a person to live in such a way that they are constantly being nourished and given rest in the ordinary rhythms of their life. Because most moms, especially homeschooling moms, are not able to have a lot of alone time. But I will tell you a secret, even if you like alone time, I myself also enjoy it, you don't need that in order to feel rested and cared for if you live in a humanizing way. And leisure is one of these things that people have just always done and understood until well, I guess you could say the industrial revolution, but we could talk more later. So anyways, what are the practices that you're engaged with? What about for your kids? Are you alternating rest and work, mind work versus body work? Is the work you're giving someone really satisfying to the mind? Because engaging with ideas is actually satisfying to a mind, but wasting away looking at nothingness or reading terrible books will actually frustrate and bore a child in the wrong way. One thing that I always think about is my kids are not machines and I'm not a machine. So what does it look like to live like a person this summer? We need to be outside, we need to be in the dirt, we need to eat good food, we need to laugh with friends, we need to feel the summer sun on our skin as much as possible. And one of the things that I talked about in that Common House series, and I recommend you get Joshua Gibbs's book, Love What Lasts, because I learned this all from him, is the idea of common and uncommon. There are uncommonly good things you can do this summer for leisure. You could go listen to a symphony, you could go visit a museum and look at the great art but there's also all the common stuff like chasing fireflies with your kids and reading you know books around a campfire and going camping and swimming in creeks and eating strawberries and spitting watermelon seeds all those sorts of things too that are just really common ordinary goodness and the really uncommon glimpses of glory but we want to avoid the counterfeit or what Gibbs calls mediocre in the things that we regularly do and so make a list what sort of activities do you want to do? How are you going to change your summer timetable? Consider how you can bless everyone with a good bit of rest that really restores all parts of the image bearer. Now, even though we are not going to be doing formal schooling, I imagine that many of you like myself actually kind of do a year round home educating style. And so you're not going to have your formal curriculum out, but you are going to be continuing to do things that might qualify as education. So I think about what do my kids need to continue doing, right? What does my oldest, who is my only formal student right now, what does she need to continue? We need to make sure that we are doing basic arithmetic, so we'll make sure that we bake multiple times a week, or I'll make sure that she's helping me check out at stores and taking care of the money that's involved. We might actually do some oral math lessons really simply while we're driving, while we're in the house, while we're standing in line somewhere. I'm just gonna make sure that's a regular thing. Same with Spanish. If we don't use our Spanish all summer, we probably won't remember it. But again, I've talked about this before, the great thing about home educating in the classical Charlotte Mason way is that 
the line is pretty blurred between what's school and what's life. And so even incorporating these things doesn't feel like we're continuing with school. It's just a mental note on my end as the mother teacher and just as the mother to continue to put these things before my children so they continue to grow their loves towards these things. So make some plans. Draw something down on a scrap piece of paper. What read aloud books do you want to cover? What, what scripture memory might you want to do? What songs do you want to introduce them to? What art could you go see? Different things like that. In fact, I call it the benediction table at my house. It used to be our main morning time and then it sort of morphed into our lessons as we started formally this year but you know shocker there's a guide for it in common house but you can use these sorts of things to really build out a rich summer of truth goodness and beauty in a formal way that doesn't feel like formal lessons or maybe hey maybe you've never done tea time or you only did it once every so often during the school year it would be a good thing to get in the habit of doing that this summer, maybe once a week, maybe inviting friends to join, maybe doing a summer book club with some friends, different things like that for your kids. But then also for you, because I'll never let the mom off the hook, what sort of things do you need to educate yourself on this summer to prepare for next year? Where did you have lapses during the school year? What didn't you do well? I've shared before that I was a little surprised at how bad I was at nature study. For someone who loves being out of doors, easily on the trail with all my children, seven hours, packed lunches, dream afternoon for me. However, I could not name any birds, any plants, any trees, any flowers, anything. And so this year I realized I'm actually pretty uneducated in this area of our schooling. So I'm spending the summer, I've asked a couple friends who are really good at this to go on the trail with me and teach me. Come show me the plants, come show me the flowers, show me the trees, show me the birds so that I'm one, better able to educate my children. But two, when you can name something, when you know it, when you recognize it, when it's familiar, you can love it better. And of course, that's what we want ultimately as we learn about God's world. And of course, in education, you're gonna need to think about pre-reading for the school year. I know it's weird, you're in term three and you're like, okay, we are almost there. We are really getting there. Ooh. Hmm, new curriculum's out, let's go find all the books. It's like a thing we do, isn't it? And so make sure you're planning your pre-reading. I'm organizing mine in a new way, totally following the CMEC, my great love of knowledge of God, knowledge of man, knowledge of the universe. And I'm going to be pre-reading that order. I'm actually gonna talk about this in Common House, how I'm organizing my list through the summer so that I know what I'm reading when, and we're just gonna have a great time. Then think about adventure. When you have many little kids or when you're schooling some of them or maybe when you're schooling all of them and your hours are longer than they are for me right now, it can be easy to forget to have adventure. I am pretty much Bilbo Baggins. I will run down a grassy field screaming I'm going on an adventure whenever I have the opportunity with my kids. But sometimes it just falls to the wayside when you have a lot of things to get done like laundry and meal planning. So consider what sort of adventure can you work into your summer rhythm. And it doesn't need to be planned, it doesn't need to be big. Consider making empty time your friend this summer. Let your kids get bored, let you get bored. Go out into the trail without a time that you need to leave by. Be willing to take a path you haven't done before. Be willing to hike up the creek instead of walking on a path. Be willing to meet up with friends and see what you find. Give time for adventure and allow that sense of wonder to be awakened, to be cultivated, because that is one of the root, I would say one of the roots of education. Another, of course, is gonna be humility and repentance, but that, that wonder of God's world, of his people, that's necessary to actually become a well-formed, virtuous person. And you have a chance this summer to really make time for that to happen in a way that isn't as easy during the school year. And then lastly, consider the home. Are there projects you've been wanting to do, spaces in the house you've wanted to refresh, things you need to reorganize? Do you need to go through and go through all the kids' toys and see what's broken and get them out of there. Reorganize how the toys are stored so that your little guys are able to clean up better on their own. Did you want to finally clean the insides of all your lights? Things that just never make it to the priority part of the to-do list during the school year. It might be great to ask your husband, maybe schedule a couple work days for the yard or the garden or different things like that. So that when you come back into the fall, you feel like you touched all those places that, you know, regularly only need to be touched once or twice a year. like. Actually, I don't know how often you change an air filter. My husband does it, but change your air filters, get a new dish sponge, things like that. And just take care of those little tasks that honestly aren't as important as spending time with your children during the school year and use the summer to catch up on those. And hopefully it'll help the house feel a little bit brighter and lighter. You'll enjoy being in your space even more come fall. And you'll feel like you spent your summer with a good mix of meaningful work, restful play, 
good books. Please read good books in the summer. So using your summer purposefully, it's actually a gift to you because I think what happens a lot of times with homeschool moms who are wives and they are mothers and they are mother teachers and so they do all of the parts of life it feels like, that it can start to turn into I have to do a lot of things. Well, I have to pre-read and I have to get to that closet and I have to make sure the kids get enough time out of doors and I have to yada yada yada. But Really, I think for most of us who choose to keep our children at home and to be so invested in every area of their life and really try to build out a cohesive life where everything points to the love of God in all things, that we are people who really like these things, who are really grateful to be in the position to do these things, who really love being with our children, who love reading the books, who love planning the school year. And so really it's a get to. We get to do these things. We don't have to do these things. And so when you think about your summer, remember that this sort of meaningful work is a blessing to you. It will nourish and enrich you. And when you take your rest and you play in the creek or you sit in the sun while your kids play in the mud kitchen, all of these things, this work and this play, this work and this prayer, have been the habits of humanizing living for a really long time. And we have the chance this summer to put a lot of that in place in our life to really bless us in the fall. So I hope that you will consider joining us over in Common House. Again, I have a lot of resources. I think, I guess I put them all in there, really. <laughs> I just listened to myself talk in this video. Um, and I will be back very soon to talk about books that I think a mother teacher should be reading this summer. And that will be our next mother culture video. So I'll see you in that one.